Okay, hi brothers and sisters. Um, we're going to take a second look, or a third look, <clears throat> at the heavenly battle um, that played out, that were shown in the scriptures, and actually who may have ended up on planet Earth. Um, so we're going to read in, where did I decide to read? Daniel. Daniel 8, okay? So we'll begin reading. It grew. So what grew? Well, it's told us in the prior verses that it grew four horns and one of the horns grew. So horn is a symbol of heavenly power, heavenly authority. Once again, the horn is feminine, just like your wings. It is a symbol of heavenly authority and power. So the it here is, I'm going to tell you, it is the heart that spirit exalted in man's heart. So when that happens, she actually gets cast down from the throne and he gets exalted. And by him being exalted by the harlot spirit, he actually takes control of the throne, is what we're actually shown happens. And so here we get in verse 10 of Daniel 8, it, the harlot will say, but it's really him, grew until it reached the host, the host of heavens. And it threw some of the starry hosts down to the earth and trampled upon them. Let me see. Um, some of the hosts fall to the earth and was trampled upon. Um, and it said, it set itself, the heart of the spirit exalted in man's heart by extension. That means she exalts him. So he's the one that actually gets exalted into the second heaven to her throne. So it, he will say, set itself up to be as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. It took away the daily sacrifice from the Lord and her sanctuary was thrown down. Because of rebellion, well, uh, we discovered uh, what the meeting of Gomorrah meant and it meant a rebellious people and it was a feminine noun. So the daughters were actually taking part in their own demise when they would not exalt their own head, their own feminine head, female. I have a female head, just like he has a male head. God is defined as feminine and masculine, 2316 in the Greek. So, but then we have the masculine and the feminine here playing out on earth, right? And the masculine would have you believe that there's no feminine at all. She's just at his feet. And we're going to bear witness to how all of that actually came into being and how the men of Baal actually exalted themselves just through these few verses. It shouldn't be too long to go through. So it set itself up the king of Babylon through his harlot exalting him. Set himself up to be as great as the commander of the host. Who is the commander of the army? We're going to find it in a minute. So the commander of the army of the Lord, it took away the daily sacrifice. The daily sacrifice was a daily thanks. It wasn't a blood offering. It never was. It was thrown from the Lord and her sanctuary was thrown down. Because of the rebellion, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the rebellion, the Lord's people and the daily sacrifice were given over to it, to the heart of spirit. That's indwelt in man and woman's heart today that is called a harlot because it basically comes down to the women exalting a man as if he's Lord and God, right? And that's idol worship is what we're told. Idol worship of actually Baal, your husband is Lord and God. Um, it prospered in everything it did and truth, truth was thrown to the ground. And it says, equity stands far off, right? Let me look that verse up right quick. Truth could not enter in. Right, fairness stands far off. She couldn't enter in. They wouldn't let her. Um, into her own holy hill, her throne. They wouldn't let her enter into it. Um, so equity, I think is how it's could not enter. It may even be. Okay, so they have Isaiah 59, 14. I think it's found in a couple places. It's just, so justice is driven back. And righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. And honesty cannot enter in. Because of the king who exalted himself over her throne. It was never his throne. It was her throne. Uh, her throne is the right to governance through the law. And he cast that down to the ground. Okay. So we get this in Daniel. Right. The, the host. Some of the host was actually thrown down. 
and stamped upon. We also get, let me see here, this in Judges 5. Alright? Okay. So what does it say? From the heavens. So we get the understanding this is a heavenly, earthly battle. From the heavens the stars fought, and from their courses they fought against Sisera. Some of them says from their orbits. Right? They fought. The stars fought from the heavens. The stars fought with Sisera from their courses. Then we get some of the starry host in Daniel 8 being cast down. So if we go to this Greek word, Strong's Greek 477, it says um, the heavenly bodies, a rudiment, an element, a rudimentary principle, which also says is going to burn with fervent heat. The elemental principles that our, our world is founded upon, which is a lie, an elementary, uh, an elementary rule. So when we scroll down into the little notes here, at the final paragraph, it says the RSV, however, renders stoxia as an elemental spirit, as elemental spirits, i.e., spiritual powers or cosmic spirits. This views 4747 elements as ancient astral beings associated with the very beginning makeup of the earth. Well, that may be so, but understand they got cast down from their rightful positions of power by a king who began to exalt himself over her. Where do we find somebody being cast down? So this is going to zero us in on what the problem is and who actually is walking amongst us that got cast down from her rightful position of power. Well, if we go to Lamentations chapter 2, this is what it's going to tell you. All right. Lamentations chapter 2, what does it say? Okay, we'll read if I can get to it. Um, How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in her anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel? The heavy believe it's a man. Oh, it's a man. And remember, not her footstool in the day of her anger. Remember, we're talking about her head being upset with her. And she's saying to the daughter, how did he get exalted in the heart of these women who are playing his heart? How is he exalted himself to your throne? So in her wrath and in her anger against her own inheritance for causing this mess is how she's looking at it. She casts her down. She literally casts her down. How the Lord has covered daughter Zion. It's not a man. It's talking about a literal daughter. And I think with her host, with her, that was fighting against this ridiculous takeover of her power, and she gets cast to the ground for it. So how the Lord has covered daughter Zion with the cloud of her anger, she has hurled down the splendor of Israel from heaven to earth. She has not remembered her footstool in the day of her anger. So we get, we could read the whole, this whole chapter because it's really telling, but I'm going to run out of time, and I know it. But what else do we find in Psalm 132 that leads us to believe that the daughter Zion came out of the north kingdom, all right? At this time, there was already this separation going, and Judah was exalting himself as God, right, over her. And we see him making, we see Jeroboam made two, two um, idols of calves in the north kingdom. We did a study on this quite a while ago. And it says, you can come worship at these two, one in Dan, one in Ephraim. So they wouldn't have to walk up to Judah and worship the idol there. So by that time, they had torn down the female idol. We know that there was male and female. We know the female idol. Uh, we see Hezekiah and we see um, um, Solomon tearing these down. These are two kings that actually went up and tore against the female representation down. Tore the female representation down. Um, and she was represented by uh, a pillar. Those are That's one of the representation. I can't remember. There was three that we zeroed in on. Uh, another one was the Nahashta. Uh, or the, uh, if I'm saying it right, I don't think I am, which was the, the serpent wrapped around the pole that Moses had made. It had become a thing for them to worship. 
And so the kings had no problem tearing down the feminine representation, but they left the male one standing. And Jeroboam continues to play into this Baal worship, uh, Baasha, and all these kings in the Old Testament. You'll see what they in, bring into their house, which is Baal. It's never with a female. Never. Because by this time they had torn the female representation down. And God says, well, that's fine. You know, I, I, I'm glad, Hezekiah, that you tore those. Because I told you to make no image, neither male nor female. But you tore the female one down, and you left the male one standing, and you told the women to come and worship at his feet. That's what you did to my daughters. So here we actually see the Lord casting daughter Zion down. Daughter Zion, she simply would have been a daughter out of the ten north tribes, which is where she would have come from as the sovereign ruler over the entire kingdom with the law, right? His job was to uphold that law and take it out into the land. And he did not uphold it. He did not. He exalted his own self up to the throne. And we see how he slowly did that little by little. And God allows this actually. And I think this is actually a learning phase that we're in to teach us some life lessons. But here we get, I, I love to have the time to read this. It's a shame I don't. Um, because this is such a great chapter let's go in right quick I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna get interrupted and I really want to fill you in on some interesting real interesting detail so the Lord cast the her footstool down the Lord had swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob no Israel Judah at this time and had not pity she has thrown down in her wrath the strongholds of the daughter of it says Judah, but it was uh, daughter Zion, as she was known. Zion means a branch. It doesn't mean Judah. It means Zion, a branch, took out. And that was represented by a daughter from the North Kingdom. So there's multiple titles that you have to be constantly working around because people go, well, it doesn't say that. It says this, it says that. Well, you've got to figure out what it actually is telling you, all right, before you can really put it all together she has brought them down to the ground she has polluted the kingdom and the principles thereof she has cut off in her fierce anger all the horn the ones that was exalted these daughters the hosts these hosts that had full control all right took the blame they end up with the blame on their heads cast down to the earth for what the wicked daughters and sons were doing which were rejecting the, the daughters and this was absolutely rejecting their own head their own rule their own right to rule and it wasn't a wicked rule it was a rule from God but God blamed the daughters for allowing this to happen going how could this have happened on your watch you uphold your law my law I'm your head female not male look at us <laughs> I don't walk around with male head no matter how much the boys want to hope that that's the way it is. Oh, well, we know what it does for them. I had toot toot. Um, she brought them down to the ground. She has polluted the kingdom and the principal zero. She has cut off in her fierce anger all the horn, the exalted ones, in her anger. She has drawn back her right hand from before the enemy. That was the representation of her rule. Um, her inheritance was the daughter. She placed her spirit upon them. That means she taught us with her law, her word. Um, she chose us out to do that uh, before the enemy. And she burned against Jacob, actually, against the daughter of Judah. It's going to tell us that, like a flaming fire. So the daughter of Judah is representative as the sovereign ruler. And the reason was is because she flowed into, like, a living water into like the key of David into that male temple from the female temple into the male she was assigned this role to take the law into that temple so she has bent her bow like an image she stood with her right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant there we go pleasant means Israel to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion which the daughter Zion is another name for daughter Judah but daughter Judah would have come out of the north kingdom. That was her right. She poured out her fury like fire. The Lord was an enemy. She has swallowed up Israel. She has swallowed up all of her palaces. We see that in, um, where was it? 
Psalm 74 or 78. I can never keep them too straight. She has destroyed her stronghold that always belonged to the daughter of Zion. We're told that. And had increased in the daughter of Judah. Now it says the daughter of Judah. Mourning in lamentations. Who began mourning? Who do we see mourning? The Shulamite. That's who we see. The Shulamite was Shiloh. And Shiloh come out of the territory of Ephraim, the North Kingdom. It'll always belong to one of the daughters from the North Kingdom. And she has violently taken away her tabernacle as if it were of a garden. She has destroyed her places of the assembly. And she did. The Lord hath cast the solemn feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion and has despised in the indignation of her anger the king and the priest. And she had reason to despise them. The Lord has cut off or cast off her altar. She hath aboard her sanctuary. She has given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord as in the day of the solemn peace. The Lord has proposed purpose to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. She has stretched out a line. She had not withdrawn her hand from destroying. Therefore she made the rampart and a wall to lament. And they languished together. So we let. She lets them destroy her. And uh, her gates are sunk into the ground. She had destroyed and broken her bars. Not her kings. Her leaders are among the Gentiles. These are the heavenly hosts that got cast down. Daughter of Zion got cast down. She did, in the anger of the Lord. And she bears the sin of what Israel was doing. The daughters of Israel and the sons were doing, which were exalting the harlot spirit within them. They actually give her throne over to the harlot surrounding nations, surrounding her, that come against her and refuse to walk in her law. I saw a quick little video there. It says, well, if Jesus, who dies for us our sins in, in, in Islam, if not Jesus? You don't, no man can die for you, it says, no man. And if you don't realize that you're bearing your own sins right now upon your head for not walking in the way of God, then you haven't reasoned out what the problem is. Too many sits around on their butt going, oh, I don't have to worry because, you know, Jesus is coming to get us. It says, even as Jesus is head of the church, so too is man husband the head of the wife. Really? So just like Jesus died for the bride, does men wash you in his blood? Oh, is his blood so pure that he has to wash the wife in it? You don't know the Godhead. So how exactly does that take into account the Godhead, which is female and male? Oh, I see. The male dies for male and female, and he takes on all those laws under the Torah that are designated and shot at the feminine and somehow he can accomplish all, fulfill all of those laws. He can, can he? He can. Well, that's just, again, the idol out of Egypt. And we're told it. And no man can die for another. It tells you that three times, I believe, in the Old Testament. No man. And he certainly can't die for a woman and wash her clean in his blood. If there's any bloodshed here, it's cutting away the wicked. That's the only way that you are restored and washed in water. And the water is represented as the law that would have kept you safe. Um, as it is, you're walking in your own sin. You're bearing your own sins right now. And it's only the law of God that would place you back under safety. We know it's her power to be able to provide you with a new body if you think a man can do that um, then you certainly haven't reasoned the text out and we know from all of this she was the one that got cast down off of her throne Isaiah 52 is about the only place I can find a real throne mentioned um, and she got cast down from that throne and it says come away Babylon there is no throne for you daughter Babylon that's how it bows to man as if he's Lord God which exalts the king of Babylon, uh, which is his law that has come to rule the land, and that's why it gets to be known as a beast system, and we've looked at that. So, the elders of the daughters on sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. Mine eyes fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. 
my liver is poured upon the earth. There we got the liver poured upon the earth. That takes us to uh, the sword. Oh, where is the sword? Isaiah 21, is it? Um, for the destruction of the daughter of my people. So you see, we are zeroing in on the daughters of my people. They got cast down from their rightful place of authority. We see the men coming against them as men at war in Micah chapter 2. And they were ripping the robe, which is a symbol of their glory and their right to rule. In uh, the gently flowing waters of Shiloh, which we've discussed, and they were ripping the garments off. They were, they were um, defiling these daughters. Let her eyes look upon Zion, let her be defiled. And God says, don't worry, girls. <clears throat> You're going to take it all back. Because the children in the suckling swoon in the street of the city, they say to the mothers, where is corn, where is wine? Um, what thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the wall, who can heal it? So what we mean by breach is they, it, was, it was an attack, it was a siege, they came upon her wave upon wave, we're told that in um, oh, Job 30, 31, they pour upon her wave upon wave, and they just were attacking her from every angle, and they were not receiving her law, they refused her, they rejected her, they rejected the gently flowing waters of Shiloh, for a wicked king uh, that was really putting in play a violent beast system that would come against these women. And she, she warned them against this. She said, this is going to happen to you. And you bring it upon yourselves when you reject your own head's authority and fall under his. <laughs> Look what he does. <laughs> yeah, it was never his head to rule you. You had your own. And you rejected her. Um, Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. They have not discovered your iniquity to turn away your captivity. What was your iniquity? Bowing to Baal as if he's Lord and God. Baal is another name for your husband. It's also a name for Lord of Dung. But have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. Yeah, they just loaded them down on the woman's head. Um, all that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All my enemies have opened their mouths against me. They hiss and gnash their teeth. There you go with the gnashing of teeth. And the womb of Sheol. With the womb of Sheol are we at agreement. These women decided to go right along with the men and were bowing down at the feet of man as if he was Lord and God. And they don't even know they're bearing their own sins upon their heads when they do that. But they caused her to be cast down right beside them though she was fighting for the truth. Uh, certainly this is the day that we look for. We have found, we have seen it. This is what our enemies were saying against them. All your enemies open their mouth against you. They hiss and gnash their teeth saying, We have swallowed her up. This is the day we have waited for. We have lived to see this. They hated her without a cause. They had no reason to hate her. She says, My enemies have hated me without a cause. And she says that on three or four separate occasions in the Old Testament. Although they got he. No, it was her. It's all in link to the daughters. Every time. And, and that they hated the daughter of Zion who was passing over the wall. And they were firing at her. The men of Baal were firing at her. Yeah. Arrows. That's, that's spiteful words. Hateful words. They hated her. Um, the Lord had done that which she has devised. She has fulfilled, it, fulfilled her word that she had commanded in the days of old. She had thrown down. And has not pitied, and she has caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. She has set up the horn of thine adversary. So the horn actually of the adversary, of the harlot, is a king. Yeah. So they'll want to put the adversary as feminine, and indeed it is. It's a harlot that's exalting a man as if he's her head and Lord and God. No, I don't have a man's head. I have a female head, and I'll do my own thinking through the Spirit. I don't need no man to write his foolishness. And that's exactly what we got ruling in the land. No sense in reasoning. Um, their heart cry unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion. Let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let no, not the apple of thine eye cease. So the apple of, the, uh, of her eye was her daughter. So uh, I'm not going to finish reading. I simply don't have the time. Uh, but if we go to Psalm 132, we get this strange verse. And I'm thinking it was literally these daughters that had been kicked out of the heavens 
that they were actually coming upon. And you find it in Psalm 132, verse 6. They say, Behold, we heard of it. Now, see, we got the same term, it, like we do in Daniel 8. I don't think this was an it. I think this was her, the daughter of Zion, who had got cast down. It says, Lo, we heard of her at Ephrata. Where did Ephrata, where does Ephrata take us back to? Where does that verse take us back to? Let me see here. Where did I write it? I'll finish reading this. So, what does it say? Lo, we heard of her at Ephrata. We found her in the fields of the woods. It says Ja'a. That means woods. Ironically, it takes us to the house in the force of Lebanon. Um, we will go into, not his tabernacle, it's hers. Her tabernacles and we were worship at, here we go with, her footstool again. The Lord has cast her footstool. What's the footstool identified as? Right? Worship at her footstool. What do we find in, oh, where is it? Where did I put it? Revelation 12, 1. What does it say? A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Where is the moon right now in connection to earth? And I'm going to say Virgo represents the earth here. Um, and I'm going to tell you that the, the made up words here in Matthew is not right. But in Revelation it says, A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. That she, she clothes herself in the sun. And it says in the Old Testament, I didn't find the verse, it says the Lord clothes, it says himself in the sun. No, she clothes herself in the sun. This is her right here. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun with the moon at her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Is that not the sign of a um, footstool right there? But they'll have you look at it this way in Matthew, right? 34, Matthew 5, verse 34, But I tell you not to swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool. Uh, yeah, she's his footstool right now, but he ain't the Lord. Come down, O oh man, who claims you're God. Let's go there so we can prove it's a man. Satan is fallen Adam. It's another name for fallen Adam. And he is nothing more than a man who exalted himself to the throne of God. And that's her throne. The right as the sovereign Lord to write the laws in the kingdom. And um, he said, no, no. After he changed the portion in the midst to a heart and spirit that would bow to him. Okay, so we go to, it says, since thou has, um, yes, the fir trees rejoice at thee in the cedars of Lebanon, saying, since thou art laid down, no feller, no woodcutter has come up against us. And we've seen him cutting these trees down. Um, in Isaiah, I think it's uh, Psalm, was it Psalm? Uh, 74 or Psalm 78 uh, so Isaiah 14 that was verse 8 that we just read verse 9 Sheol below is eager to greet your coming uh, who's coming his coming when he falls Satan falls uh, she stirs up the spirit he stirs up the spirit of the departed for you all the rulers of the earth um, what does it say all they shall speak and say unto thee art thou also become weak as we art thou become like unto us who got cast down as women and you your pomp your pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials the worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations okay but if we go down what does it say in verse 16? Yet thou sh verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, the sides of the pit. 16. They that see thee, so the pit, they're going to see him at the pit. That's Sheol, the womb of Sheol, that the heart, that's the heart of the spirit that's in agreement 
with fallen Adam, which is Lucifer here, fell. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners and he didn't I wrote that under one of my videos about us being trapped in prison houses and none says restore restore <coughs> none comes to free you from your bondage and false prophecies that they were speaking against you so that you couldn't discover your iniquity <coughs> and what would free you and what would free you was following God's way washing in man's blood God says you don't even know who I am. You approach to me with vain traditions of men, but you don't even know me. You go, he, he, he. The Godhead happens to be she and he. And he didn't die for them on earth. He didn't. You don't wash in blood. You wash in the water, which was representing the gently flowing waters of Shiloh. And Deuteronomy 4, she said, You saw no image, make no image of me, but follow the way. This is the way that you cleanse yourself. This is the way that you end up living forever. And she's told you this over and over again. But here we get in Psalm 132. We heard of her in Ephrata. We came upon her in the fields of Jaar, in the fields of the woods. That I think that is the house and force of Lebanon. Lebanon. Let us go to her dwelling place. Let us worship at her footstool. So this is the other part, you know, that you, you have to start to, to look at. Well, with Virgo, the moon is at her feet. Well, where's the moon right now? If Earth is a representation, just say, of Virgo, where's the moon right now in connection to that? Well, it's not at her feet. It, he's spinning out there around her is what he's doing. And he has, in effect, made her his footstool which is what you get in context of Matthew 5, 34, 35, and 36. But I tell you not to swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is her footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great, not king, the great Lord, your great sovereign. Nor should you swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white. But it's saying, or by the earth, for it is her footstool. No, earth is not. The footstool. The footstool should have been the moon. Where's the moon right now? The moon is not at Virgo's feet. The moon is spinning around her. You know, and they'll, they'll look at these signs in the heavens. We're out of orbit. We're completely out of context of everything that is teaching us w that would are right things. And then we get the Psalms of so, slow degrees, which is where this psalm falls into, Psalm 132 that we just spoke of. We heard of it, her, in Ephrata. Ephrata becomes very important because of the verse in, um, over here. In, I got it wrote down, I thought. <clears throat> it's in Micah. Micah 5, right? And I'll tell you, it's Bethlehem Ephrata. It is not. It's the house of Ephraim. It's Bethel. Not Bethlehem. You can't reason. Bethel was in the territory of Ephraim. Bethel. Bethel Eph Ephrata. And where did we hear? Right? Where did we hear of her? We heard of her. I don't think it's it. In Ephrata. We came upon her in the fields of the woods. It's not an it that they came upon. <clears throat> they may have come upon her temple, her tabernacle. But it was her tabernacle representing her. They came upon her because she had been cast down to earth because the moon got out of orbit and he took control of that moon. And from the moon he takes control of, he's the false light of the world as well. And we get the Shulamite saying, look not upon me because the false light has shone upon me and made me black. Black means to be defiled in a false covenant, this lie, this web of lies. And so we do so see this heavenly battle. We see the Psalms of degree. It is literally to do with our heavenly battle playing out. All of it when you get right down to it. 
But in Micah 5, this is important that they found this tabernacle in Ephrata. Her. They found her in Ephrata, which is where your ruler will come from. But thou, it says Bethlehem, no house of Ephraim. It should be Bethel Ephrata. What's the de what was the word for um Okay. I'm gonna have to pause this just for one second. Sorry about this. But I do gotta pause you just one second. Okay, so we're just gonna take a quick look at this one word and then I do have to go. It's strong Hebrew six seven two. Ephrath or Ephratha, an Israelite woman, also the name of several places in Palestine from the same as Ashir, Ashes. Right? We see them dressed in um, oh, sackcloth and ashes. The ashes represented her house, burned to ashes. Uh, it's also from Para, which means fruitfulness. Um, another name for it says Bethlehem? I don't think so. I think it's Bethel, Bethel house. Uh, also, perhaps from Ephraim. Uh, so that takes you to Psalm 132, plain and simple. Um, and that's why we get um, this verse. It says, But thou Bethel Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yeah, of Israel, yet out of thee shall she come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So she cast her glory down so her glory could retake <clears throat> her throne. And she does just that. Um, so I think I do have to go. I'm sorry I have to cut this a little short. I thank, for I thank you for watching. Sorry I keep stumbling over my tongue. I just am in a hurry to get my thoughts out. I thank you for watching. I pray you're blessed with an abundance of truth. And I hope you all have a lovely day. And thanks again.